most folks make their first attempts at living off the grid, or perhaps they have a power outage at home, or even on their weekend getaways with the family, the one task that they often find most troublesome with is refrigeration. Now most coolers these days have little to no insulation to them. To simply throw in a bag or two of ice, you will always find yourself running back out within a day or two to spend more money on ice. And more times than not, you will find your hot dogs and your chicken legs swimming around in the same water as your fruits and vegetables. So not only are you spending more money on ice, but often replacing food as well. Now wasting money is certainly not conducive to having a simple and self-sufficient lifestyle. Folks often measure success by how much money they make. I like to measure success by how much money I can keep, but I'll get more involved with the economic talk on another part of the series. For right now, I just want to show you how to make your cooler stay cooler. Now back in my cabin videos, you heard me talk of this bubble foil. I speak very, very highly of it. It's just got so many uses. It's just wonderful stuff. Using it as an insulator, it just can't be beat. So I'm just going to use this bubble foil to really enhance the performance of this Rubbermaid cooler. I really don't know if there's any insulation in this cooler at all. I don't believe there's any in the cover at all because I can see a hole and it just looks like it's airspace. This just might be airspace as well. And I'm going to really supercharge the insulating properties of this cooler with the bubble foil. I'm going to use a metallic tape. This is a metal tape that you can buy at Walmart or any hardware store. I got a tape measure, a marker, a pair of scissors, and I'll use a yardstick too. That's all I'm going to use, and I'm going to show you how to really amp up the performance of this cooler. Now to get started here, I'm going to begin with my tape measure about an inch below the lip of the cooler. The reason is, when I put my frost blanket in here, I don't want it to be getting in the way of the lid. I don't want it holding the lid up. I want it to seal nice. So I'm going to go ahead and start there, about an inch below. I'm going to measure down to the bottom corner of my cooler. Hold the tape down, continue measuring to the next corner. And I'm going to measure up to the upper corner. And I'm going to measure back over and it comes out to be about 45 inches and I'll give it another inch or so just so I have something to tuck in. I'm going to mark that on my uh, bubble foil. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to start out, I'm going to measure my tape, continue measuring all the way across, back up to here. comes out to be about 41 inches. Now it's going to be very difficult to see here because this is such a reflective surface. But I have a grid marked out here. And remember, if you ever seen a cardboard box that was uh, not folded up yet and it had score marks in it, it would look similar to this. You would have a front, a bottom, a back, and a top, and then the sides. But I'll give you an example. The dimension I measured for here is the first dimension that goes from here down to the bottom of the cooler. And then the next dimension from this corner to the back, and then that dimension up, and then the dimension over. So I have those dimensions here. This is from the top of the cooler down to the bottom, then across the bottom, from the bottom to the top, and then from the top corner back over to the front, which is here. And this is all going to get folded up like this. This section will be the front part, this will be the bottom, this is the back of the cooler, and this is the lid. It's going to go like that, and this is going to fold up like that, and then over back like that. Now I completely cut away the two corner panels which are adjacent to the lid panel. Then I cut along these lines all the way until I reach the sides of the larger panels like this. Now again, we have the front panel, the bottom, the back panel, the top. These are sides. These panels here, I'm going to cut right about in half. 
I cut these panels in half so that I had something to overlap the side panels, which also gave me more surface area for the metallic so tape to adhere to. The front panel, I'm going to fold it right up on this first line that we made. Then I'm going to take the side panel and I'm going to fold that up as well. Then I'm going to fold the side piece right over onto its side to overlap the side panel. I'm going to take a piece of my foil and I pre-cut and I take that side panel. I'm going to do the same thing right here. Folding up the side panel. This line here is the corner of the cooler. It's a lot easier if you have help in the wind ain't blowing, of course. I'm making sure everything is lining up on the marks I made. Take a piece of this foil tape, tape the seam, hold it in place. Gonna start to come together for you now. Now I pre-cut a few pieces of foil there for convenience, just so I can uh, hold everything in place as I'm folding this together. I'm going to fold up the back right on the line there. This is that panel that we cut in half. I use these just basically to give me more surface to tape to. Take one of my little pieces here in place for now. Once I get into this stage here and it's just tacked together, I'm going to go ahead and do a dry run and make sure it fits nice in my cooler. Everything seems to fit just fine. Now that I have it fit inside the cooler, I'm going to go ahead and take some of the metallic tape and uh, I'm going to go ahead and tape the corners and get them nice and secure while I have something to press against. A piece of metallic tape. Get it centered right there in the corner. Press it right in. Get that corner taped up. And I'm going to repeat the process on all four corners. Okay, once you have it to that stage there, go ahead and fold the uh, cover down. Make sure the cooler shuts okay. If anything is holding the cooler up, just do a little bit of trimming. Now I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to go ahead and tape up the seam much better than it is now. One cooler that's been supercharged and will keep ice for a long, long time. Now, if you prefer to use ice bags and you end up with some water in your cooler, it's not a problem at all. Just slip your insert right out. You can hose it out, put it out in the sun to dry. If you end up with some meat juice in there, uh, just a mild bleach solution, you can clean it all out. Uh, this stuff is wonderful. It doesn't absorb water at all. And I highly recommend that you use the uh, metal tape and don't use duct tape or something like that that will absorb water and eventually mildew. You won't want to have that in your cooler. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, head on inside now and I will uh, demonstrate how I make my salt water bottles and describe some of the other benefits that I have from using those. So let's do that. Well now that we got our little cooler blanket all made up, Let's get on the topic of ice. Now, you will rarely ever see me spend money on a bag of ice. I make all my ice at home, but what I put in my cooler are salt water bottles. I like to use these square juice bottles. I like the square ones because they stack up nicely. There's a lot less wasted space in my freezer that way. 
And I don't fill these with straight water. I make a salt water solution, which I will demonstrate in a minute. And the reason I use salt water is salt water freezes at a much lower temperature than regular ice. Therefore, the ice is that much colder and it lasts that much longer. The only precaution you want to take when using salt water bottles because the ice is so much colder than normal ice that it will freeze anything that is next to these bottles in your cooler. Um, if you took a steak that was thawed out and set it between two of these salt water bottles, it will literally freeze the meat in your cooler. So you want to keep your eggs and your produce and certain items like that uh, away from the salt water bottles. But I use little pieces of that bubble foil just as a little insulator blanket. But I will uh, demonstrate all of that here shortly. I just use normal table salt for my salt water bottles. I'll just generally run about a quarter cup in a bottle the size. This is a two quart container. I'll fill the bottle right to about there. You have to leave room for expansion. When the ice ex uh, freezes, it expands. And if you put that tight, it'll blow the cap right off or split the bottle. Now, when you're finished up with your project, you'll have some little pieces of the bubble foil left over. You don't want to be throwing these out. These make very handy little barriers that'll go in between your uh, salt water bottles, in between uh, sensitive uh, items like eggs, um, your vegetables and stuff like that because those salt water bottles will freeze up your vegetables really fast and it kind of ruins them so just having a little barrier like that in between them will work just fine now one way that I like to set up my cooler is I'll have the salt water bottles right next to my beer it keeps them really frosty and right on borderline freezing then I'll take these normal ice packs and put that right next to the salt water bottle and then have my other perishables right here. Now the salt water bottle, because it's colder than the normal ice, will help keep this stuff frozen a lot longer than normal. So I can do it that way. The beer stay nice and frosty. This has more longevity due to the aiding in the cold salt water bottles here and then I have my other perishables here and all inside the cooler blanket it lasts a long long time. Now one thing I do here at the homestead that saves me a bunch of money is I make tons of these salt water bottles. By doing so not only does it prevent me from having to buy ice every time I go away but by tucking these into every nook and cranny of my freezer and eliminating all the dead air space not only does my freezer run a lot less but when the power goes out, the contents of my freezer stays frozen for several days longer than a freezer without them. If I ever find I need more space in my freezer, I simply pull out some of the bottles, set them aside, let them thaw out, fill the freezer full of food, and then as space starts to become available in the freezer again, I tuck bottles back in, I eliminate all the dead air space, and this has made a huge difference in the performance of my freezer and has been a really good money saver for me. Well, I hope you enjoyed this first part of my new series and found the information to be beneficial. I'm certain that if you make some of these salt water bottles and amp up the performance of your cooler, that you'll certainly be glad you did. Uh, it'll save you a lot of money in ice, and saving money is just good backwoods logic. So all the best, and God bless.